Welcome my friends. Today we will discuss about new topic which is the biological, biological processes in human body. So under this lesson we have four main topics uh, which is about digestion of food, process of respiration, process of excretion, process of blood circulation. First we will start our lesson from digestion of food. So simply digestion of food can be defined as a process of, pro process of converting complex organic compounds into simple organic products which can be easily absorbed into human body. So complex organic compounds means the carbohydrate containing foods, protein containing foods, lipid containing foods. So mainly the mechanical digestion and chemical digestion are the two processes involved in food digestion. So mechanical digestion can be simply defined as the process of change in the physical nature of food. As you are aware, our teeth are capable of breaking down foods into small pieces. This is simply a mechanical process. So this is the basic example for mechanical digestion. Then chemical processes so chemical digestion involves enzymes. Those are biological catalysts. These enzymes break down complex organic compounds into simple molecules and it will allow our body to be absorbed these simple molecules so for example we will we can discuss a lot of examples related to this in the future sections so uh, for example simply if you eat uh, rice uh, cooked rice once you eat you may feel some uh, sweet taste that is due to the action of enzymes salivary amide is present in our saliva convert starch into maltose so this is an chemical diet process so today let's discuss about the human digestive system so human digestive system is a tube like system so which consists of mainly mouth esophagus stomach um, small intestine and large intestine along with the anus and rectum so in addition they are, they have some, some other organs which support the digestive system so far uh, so can be said they can be defined as glands so salivary glands uh, liver then cold bladder and pancreas so as i mentioned earlier this can be defined as a single tube that runs from mouth to anus the functions of a uh, digestive system includes mainly the food digestion then the absorption of these digested end products then finally the removal of undigested materials from the body as i mentioned earlier it consists of these glands salivary glands pancreas and liver so the functions of glands include supply enzymes and other sub, uh, substances for example bile required for food digestion so First, we will discuss about the digestion process in mouth or buccal cavity. So, within the within mouth, it consists of teeth, salivary glands, and tongue. Mean. And uh, so, salivary glands, three salivary glands present in our in the mouth, and these involved in secretion of saliva. So, once sec saliva is secreted, this mixes with food. So, tongue involves in the mixing of food with saliva and it also it aids in swallowing food so main function is the identification of so, uh, of taste so therefore we can say tongue has I have the functions as identification of taste mixing of food with saliva and swallowing so the teeth as I mentioned earlier teeth involved in mechanical digestion of food then so uh, Saliva, saliva contain tiny no salivary amylase. So salivary amylase involved in partial digestion of starch to maltose. So you can see the reaction may, uh, shown here where this starch is converted to maltose using tiny. So uh, <coughs> then once with the tongue movement the, the food mixes with saliva and once it is swallowed it is initially formed into a bowl a bowl like structure and then with the muscle movements it is pushed into pharynx so within the pharynx is a common uh, region area to both respiratory and digestive systems so 
and there is a possibility of food to be um, get into our respiratory tract then it will be a problem so there is a part called epiglottis which prevent the bolus or the food particles to enter into esophagus, esophagus without entering into uh, uh, trachea that means it prevents the entering of food into respiratory tract so in this video clip you can see so epiglottis once we follow the food epiglottis is get closed and prevent the entering of food into respiratory tract okay so then then how we'll next we'll discuss about how the food will pass through esophagus so as i mentioned earlier food will pass through the esophagus as a bolus by the peristaltic movement peristaltic movements provide this pores to propel food bolus uh, forward and uh, into the stomach so for peristaltic movements mainly occur due to contraction and relaxation of uh, esophagus muscles so you can see the peristaltic movement here and due to contraction and relaxation of the muscles of uh, esophagus this tube it propels food towards stomach So then we'll discuss about the next section. Now we are moving from mouth to and food passes to esophagus into stomach. So now we will discuss about the digestion in stomach. So mainly in, within the stomach also there's there's a method process of mechanical digestion. So uh, and <coughs> if we can define stomach as a dilated sac like organ and it's secret gastric juice so this uh, gastric juice mainly consists of hydrochloric acids then pepsins and renin so the as i mentioned in the previous video the, the peristaltic activity of stomach muscles break the bolus and mixed food bell with uh, bell and form a chyme so due to the hydrochloric acid this chyme will be acidic so uh, first thing this act, um, hcl activates pepsin so when pepti, pepsin get activated it digests proteins to produce polypeptides so you can see how uh, the digestion takes place when pepsin act, acts on proteins so now other thing now the renin is mostly present in infants and this causes coagulation of food so then uh, this uh, chyme or acidic chyme temper is stored in stomach and uh, it consists of partially digested proteins then digested and undigested carbohydrates then undigested lipids water minerals and vitamins then these are released uh, so these are released into its proximal part of the small intestine for further digestion so then we will so in, in, we will discuss now we will discuss about the digestion in small intestine so a small intestine is a long small tube and is consists of three main sections as mentioned here duodenum jejunum and ileum so from stomach food first move on to the first part or the proximal part which is the duodenum so within the small intestine the chemical digestion of food mainly takes place so within the small intestine uh, uh, the pancreas and pancreas secrete this pancreatic juice and also from its small intestine it secretes intestinal juice so pancreatic juice secreted into duodenum through the pancreatic duct so you can see the pancreatic duct in this picture so other thing uh, bile is enlarged in liver so this is temper is stored in gold bladder and this bile is secreted into the small intestine so bile is really important for lipid digestion because lipids are mostly insoluble in water so once bile is secreted the lipids in food are broken down into small droplets by the process of process known as emulsification so this allows the enzymes to act on lipids and co uh, start the process of digestion of lipids so the secreted bile uh, the bile is secreted by a bile duct from gold bladder 
so bile mainly consists of uh, bile pigments such as bilirubin and bilirubin then bile salts bicarbonate ions and water so here you can see from this video so the bile is uh, synthesized from river and it's stored in gold bladder and gold bladder secrete to bile duct into the small intestine so this is uh, uh, the enzyme digestion food from food digestion within a small intestine using uh, pancreatic juice and uh, uh, intestinal juice so mainly pancreatic juice consists of enzymes such as trypsin amylase lipase and in small intestine consists of molded sucrose lactase and peptidase so uh, the if you see uh, the trypsin mainly acts on proteins which will digest uh, proteins into polypeptides the amylase acts on starch and it converts um, uh, starch into maltose and lipase acts on lipids and uh, digesting it them into uh, glycerol and fatty acids so it's uh, the it, most of the as you can see the pancreatic juice even these products are partially digested products so they need to be digested completely into end products uh, which will enable our body to be absorbed so the maltose uh, produced from here and all the maltose produced will be digested by maltase to form glucose then sucrose will be digested to form glucose and fructose then lactose will be digested uh, into glucose and galactose by lactase and also polypeptides are uh, digested into amino acids or the uh, basic unit by using peptidase enzyme so then we'll discuss what will happen to these end products so mainly these will be absorbed into body by a small intestine so uh, in order to absorb these end products so a small intestine uh, must have following features for efficient absorption so one thing is it's a it's a long tube you are approximately it's usually seven meters long tube then presence of circular folds in the inner wall and presence of finger like projections called villi in the um, villi in these circular folds and even within these villi it consists of microvilli in epithelial cells of the villi then uh, thin epithelial lining on villi thin epithelial lining will allow the food uh, food to be absorbed into the uh, bloodstream so therefore they are, the villi are highly vascular that means yeah, these are um, having high density of blood capillaries for nutrient absorption so you can see here these are the food products which are digested food products then they are absorbed by a villi and microvilli and they then they get absorbed into the bloodstream so once they are entered into bloodstream, uh, these products primary, uh, finally can go into uh, either storage or for other body functions. So ex for example, for the excess amount of glucose in blood are converted to glycogen and stored in liver. So when the concentration of glucose is decreased, that means they are normally our body should maintain a normal level, uh, a constant level of glucose within the body. So if it is below that level, then glycogen will be break down to form glucose and added into blood then the more unabsorbed materials are sent to the large intestine so the one thing i should mention so uh, digested lipids through the fatty acids and glycerol fatty acids are, uh, not, are not directly absorbed into uh, uh, into the bloodstream first they are absorbed by lacteals and then absorbed into bloodstream so the process uh, then we'll discuss about the process in the large intestine the main function of large intestine is to absorb water received from uh, from the small intestine and so thereby once the water in the undigested food are absorbed the uh, this undigested material will become same solid and this will be released from our body body as feces so this is all about the body digestive system the next thing is about the diseases related to digestive system and we'll discuss about in our next slide thank you have a nice day goodbye